What's happening all you mentees? Uncanny Omar here from Near Men Condition. And today, well, I'm here to talk about Copra. What exactly is this hardcover? I've had so many of my viewers ask me when I'm doing an overview of it because a lot of them have been on the fence. So today I hope I'm able to clarify what exactly this is and who it's for. So let's get started. And welcome back everybody. So what we're looking at here is the Copra Master Collection Book 1. And it is a hardcover with art on board. And here we have Image, Copra, Master Collection, the creator, Michelle Fife, and the little skull right there, which plays an important part in this book. Book 1. I believe there is going to be, I guess if this does really well, it, there will be a total of three of them. This is really unique because all of this is nothing but praise from other creators for this title. The Juggernaut of Violence, the Industry of Mayhem, the Superhero Revenge Machine, and that is what Copra is. Collecting issues 1 through 12, there's your ISBN, the image logo, and mature content. The price of this is $39.99, and I wanted to point something out really quick because I'm used to doing overviews of deluxe editions from Image Comics, so people are used to what kind of height they are, but this feels like it's a little bit bigger than your deluxe edition hardcover from Image. These are the same height as that Savage Dragon or Invincible or the Walking Dead hardcovers, and I just had a sender here. And... Those are as tall as Omnis. So if you look here, this is the newer printing of Avengers by Jonathan Hickman, but you can see how much taller it is. So really what this book, the dimensions of it, reminds me of are those library editions that Rick Remender has put out. And Tokyo Ghost is getting a new printing this year. Or 2023, sorry. But even those are just a tad bit shorter than Copra. So let's do one more comparison. Comparing it to the size of a Dark Horse library edition, like the Hellboy library, the Goon library, or Harrow County here, or Nocturnals, but it seems like, there we go, this book is just as big as those library editions, so it is a big, oversized book. Alright, the Master Collection Volume 1, we're gonna crack it open, show off the artwork, talk a little bit about the stories collected in here, what it is about, and of course, check out the build of this particular book. All right. Here is the end paper right there with one of the lead characters. And this is basically your team of characters. Now, looking at this, I'm sure some of you that have read DC Comics for a while, probably immediately thinking or are confused as to why is Deadshot in this group. All right, we'll, we'll get to that here in a little bit. Here we have Copra, created and produced by Michelle Fife, Image Comics, and another shot of the team, the ever-changing team. And here's your table of contents with the page number that you're going to find those stories in, and the thank yous over here, the acknowledgments, and the cover to issue number one. The skull with this piece right here plays a big part in all of this. So this collects issues 1 through 12 of Copra. It has 320 pages in here. Now, I first was introduced to this series through the first trade paperback that Image was putting out. And I think they released like two or three and then they reprinted uh, four through six. That's why I think there's going to be a total of three of these hardcovers. And... I found out that he had originally self-published the book and then Image was publishing, or he looked to Image to publish uh, the series in trade paperback format to read a wide, uh, reach a wider audience. And when I got to meet him at Heroes Con, we actually talked a little bit about that. So here we are introduced to this team of bandits who, yes, are like your Suicide Squad. Here we meet the characters of Sniper and Brawler, who are a couple. We meet the robot up there. His name is Whirr. And he's just like a little a kid that's trapped inside of this suit. Uh, this young lady right right there is Goofy, and then we have Grace over here. She used to be a supermodel right there, and it actually explains all this. Uh, and now she's a combat expert 
And then we have this character of Light, who looks a lot like Dr. Light. That is correct. And they're all led by the guy that was back here. And this is Manhead. Okay. So those are the kind of names that you're going to be seeing through here. And they're all being led by Manhead on this particular mission that is to deliver this particular skull with that little piece. They're all looking at it right here at the very beginning. That piece right there. And comes in the villains to go and retrieve this skull with this piece. Now, what's interesting about this is that this is the artwork, by the way, that we're going to be looking at, which we'll talk about in a little bit, is that some of the characters, some of the lead characters, recognize the lead villain, this triangle head right here that goes by Vitas. Now, since this is like Suicide Squad, a lot of these characters don't make it even past issue number one. As a matter of fact, half the team gets killed in issue number one with something else horribly happening. But yes, they all recognize this character of Vitas. So apparently they've had some kind of past and Vitas pretty much blows up this entire city right here, gets away with the rest of his team and the blame is on Copra. Now, Copra has a very Amanda Waller type of character, this lady here. And they are all wanted by the end of issue one for genocide of, yeah, the death of 31,824 civilians. And all they have left is that piece that went inside of that skull. So this is the remaining team. And the rest of the series is, or the rest of this volume, rather, is about clearing their name. So in here, you're going to see a lot of tropes. Yes, this is heavily inspired by Ostrander's Suicide Squad, but honestly, there's a lot of Grant Morrison's Doom Patrol in here. So if you're a fan of both of those, you're going to get so much more out of this. There are other comic book tropes in here, such as this character right here and this, well, where is he? Vincent, I'm looking for Vincent. Let me see, I think he appears in the next couple pages. There we go. This guy right here, who's kind of your sorcerer and goes by the name of Vincent, which I find interesting because the character design or the design of Doctor Strange by Steve Ditko was based on Vincent Price. So obviously, Michelle is a huge fan of comic books. Now, when I said that he does everything, he does everything in this book from the artwork. So that includes the pencils, the inks, the colors, the story, the lettering, and the lettering is nice. I love the layouts um, that he uses for his panels, too. Now, Doctor Strange, Vincent, this character, is not the only comic book trope you're going to find in here or characters that are outside of Morrison's Doom Patrol or Ostrander's Suicide Squad. You're going to find a character that kind of... This guy right here, Rex, it's kind of based on, like, Jack Kirby's Fourth World. They're known as the Engineers instead of New Gods. You get the idea. There are other characters that end up joining the team, but before I get to those characters, I wanted to talk about where I think these guys right here. There's three characters that show up here that, yes, that obviously are your characters based on the Reavers, which were X-Men villains. So you have, like, there's your Bone Crusher. Uh, oh, what was his name? Skrull, Skull, Skull Crusher, I think, and Pretty Boy. Bone, bone Crusher, Skull Cruncher. Ah, Pretty Boy, I do remember that. I think they actually made a toy of that guy. No, yes, they did, because I have not And then characters that, of course, remind you of your Suicide Squad characters. So you have this character right here. His name is Lloyd, and instead of Floyd Lawton, it's Deadshot, of course, but he goes by the name Marksman in here. So, yes, I was confused, too, because there were so many characters that seem very familiar. There's a character here named the Digger, I think, but that's Captain Boomerang. Shade the Changing Man, of course, Dr. Light, which we saw earlier, Count Vertigo, which instead, this time around, it's a different count, this guy right here, Corpotha, I think, or something like that, and, yeah, of course, we saw Dr. Strange and Clea and the Reavers, so it, it seems like he just borrowed a lot of elements from the stories that he liked to tell one crazy-ass story, because what really carries this series, to me at least, Besides the interesting characters that I actually didn't want to die, but this being a Suicide Squad type of book, you are going to lose some characters, was this artwork. The artwork is just phenomenal to me. And I get when people look at this, they think, oh, that looks too kiddish, that looks cartoony. 
the colors are done by color pencils what is this but i think that really adds that certain charm to his art you know this kind of reminds me of like frank miller's experimental phase or even some things from like shaolin cowboy i i really really like the artwork the lettering like i mentioned is awesome and holy crap the amount of details and the compositions and layouts while i understand like if you see something off you know this happens a lot with the internet these days where somebody just grabs a yeah like this right here somebody just grabs that and makes it into a meme and everybody's like oh man that cobra book sucks but you know you're not seeing the whole picture it's just one freaking frame even jim lee has some bad days don't know why i bring jim lee up probably because he's one of my favorite artists but this is the type of artwork you are going to be seeing through here so yes i understand if this is the stuff that you don't like it's not for you then yeah absolutely it's a skip i guess but for people that love suicide squad and love books like doom patrol think you're gonna find so much more enjoyment out of this now do you need to have read those books in order to enjoy all of this Nah, not really but i think it does help especially with the tropey characters right like you can see who characters are supposed to be based on now the covers are intact right here but they're textless covers and then on the other side of the cover, you usually get some kind of quote or some kind of pinup, um, even from the beginning of issue number one, the cover to issue number one, with the MacGuffin of that skull that plays, like I said, a huge part in this, because that's what they're after. So the villains were after, the good guys have a piece, bad guys have a piece, good guys have to clear their name. And as far as extras, there's no extras, which is a shame because... With a book like this, I was hoping to see like some sketches, some scripts, some layouts, and this being the master edition, it's kind of what I wanted. Now, while the artwork to me is fun, it's great, it's gritty, it's it's messy, it's indie. I think the paper stock that they used in this was the wrong choice because this is a glossy paper, which to a lot of people, thick glossy paper is top tier paper. It doesn't get better than that. But really, it depends on the type of art. Right? I've talked about it like with the Sin City, the big deluxe editions, why they're using that matte paper to absorb the black so you can see the contrast so much better and appreciate the shadow so much more. I feel like this is a book that could have benefited from matte paper, not even the thick matte paper that they're using like here at the end page. Like this is great, but not even this thick, but just something like they use in the uh, Berserk deluxe editions, for example, that type of paper. Uh, but the book is in this glossy paper stock, and it is sewn binding, and there's that eye right there. And again, the book has 320 pages, retailing for $39.99, and that is Copra, the Master Edition Book 1. Hopefully, we'll get a book 2 and 3 to wrap up the series. I love to see creators like Michelle just get the highlight and spotlight that they deserve because he's been working i mean to do a comic book by yourself all by yourself that's crazy that is a feat man but that as they say is that if you are interested in purchasing this book don't forget to check out our sponsors cheapgraphicnovels.com your online home for graphic novels and collected editions up to 50 percent off cover price they have excellent shipping and prompt and helpful service. Check out their bargain deals for up to 90% off cover price. And don't forget that CGN also takes pre-orders. That way you don't miss out on the hottest releases. And they are currently running a special promotion for you Minties. If you're a first time customer, after receiving your order confirmation email, reply back to that email and let them know near mint condition sent you their way. They will then apply a free shipping promotional credit to your next order in the US. Cheap Graphic Novels, your source for the hottest books with a kind of deep discount, quality shipping and customer service that will keep you coming back for more. And that was the content, the page count and build of this hardcover. Let me know in the comments down below if you plan on picking this up, if you've never heard of it, if you've read it, if you picked up the singles, if you were supporting Michelle when it was being published through by himself, really, because it was going to say it was independently published. But yeah, he was self-publishing. So all those questions and comments, leave them down below. Don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe and ring that bell for notifications to let you know when our videos are going live. We are on Spreadshop and Patreon, amazing ways to support the channel. Everyone stay healthy and safe out there. Much love.